Right, yeah. Um, he's very confident in himself, like, you know, in himself. And, um, you, know, you know, guys like that, you know, want the ball in their hands. And we thought uh, David Jenkins and Mason really gave us a spark in the first half and we rewarded them by starting them. You know, you want, when you, when you don't start somebody, you know, you want the double positive. You know, you want the response from the person who now gets the start, and then you want the response from the person who got put in on the bench. A lot of times you don't get that. You get a double negative. You get a guy that goes in now that then doesn't play as well as he did off the bench, and vice versa. And I thought both of those guys did some good things. David made some shots for us, then Fletch obviously came through in the clutch and showed a lot of moxie. Right. Matt, I thought your, um, your comments about Brady were the sounds of the coach who knew how he was going to respond to that sort of thing. Would you kind of worry about him tonight? Well, that's who he is. I mean, he's competitive, just like Fletch. Like those guys are, um, you know, very intelligent about the game. You know, for true freshmen, and uh, they believe in themselves. And sometimes when you struggle, um, you know, you need that. You know, every, everyone's going to struggle at some point, whether that's their shooting or their play or whatever. You know, you just want to see people respond, get back out there, and compete. We're fortunate. We're very fortunate. We didn't have a very good start to this game, and it took us a while to settle into it. And obviously, you know, we're, you know, we're not better at Ohio State. We're just in this game, we're one possession down. You know, just like we weren't in the previous game. But uh, they're, they, uh, they obviously have a really good team and they're well covered. Yeah. Matt, um, since the ball is obviously one of the toughest guard uh, people to guard in the entire conference, how did Ethan Morton do, especially late in the game? You know, you just can't let him get deep get to a sweet spot. He could make those threes and dribble in place. But we wanted to kind of try to get our best to get him out of rhythm. But when he gets to his spots, he's you know, he's going to make those shots. He's a good player. He, he reminds me of a guy that I played with in college when he gets to those spots, those pull-ups. And, uh, and and now you're just hoping, right? You're just putting a hand up or you're jumping or you know, you're, you're just trying. You, you got to, we got to do a better job of trying to keep him pushed out and making it longer. doesn't mean he can't make them. I just don't think he you know, makes them the high clip that he did tonight. But really good player for a true freshman. You know, he, he's a fantastic player. Very, very skilled, very close. Right. Matt, yes, sir. how did you assess their plan for Zach tonight and his confident he was? Well, first of all, it's not, not fair to him. They lose one of the best players in our league that goes out after three minutes. You know, Zach Keyes is a really good player, so you know that, that wasn't fair um, to them. But, um, you know, I, I thought Zach played well. Um, you know, he had a couple shots that I thought he hurried around the basket. Um, it's one of those things when you're six for 11, it's, it's really not that bad of a percentage, but when you shoot from five, you know, but, you know <laughs> those two jump hooks he made in the second half were really good, but you know, I like his ability to pass now. That's what sets him apart, in my opinion, is that now if you want to come, we got to be able to step up and make shots, which tonight we made some in the second, in the second half. And, He's doing a great job. His effort is there. You know, he plays 32 minutes. And um, he's just got to keep plugging and, and just kind of stay with things and, and keep demanding the ball. You know, they're going to do, you know, whatever they have to do to try to keep the ball in hands. The thing that they were doing, they had some success here from Eugene Brown. You know, for a while, like, they had a little bit more success there. Now, eventually, we're going to hopefully get the ball to him in those situations, and they know that. So they got to get Oparo back in there. Uh, but I thought Oparo did a good job. I liked what they did. Um, the thing that happens with, with teams that, that double that don't usually double, they're pretty good at their double. They're not very good at their rotation because guys aren't used to it. And, and most coaches, they just don't like rotations because when you get in rotations, you get behind plays, and then people start driving the ball and start fouling. And the, the Ohio State doesn't double much. And so when they've had to double, their double's pretty good. But then sometimes tonight their rotation was good, and then sometimes tonight, you know, there wasn't a guy coming to the shooter, you know, there. So um, it, it takes a lot of practice. We double a lot ourselves. So if Zed Key would have stayed in the game, we'd have doubled him the whole game because that's what we do. Um, but uh, there's times that I, I'm concerned about it because it's hard to rotate sometimes. And you, you scored four points in the last minute to erase, erase their lead. The, the steal by Morton off the ceiling pass in the corner. Yes. When you have plays like that in clutch moments, like how much of that comes from preparation? How much of that comes from guys making plays? What do you see that enables players or teams to right. make plays like that? Right. Yeah, first of all, it's a great, you know, great kind of recognition. And I don't, 
it wasn't anything that we did. Um, it was just a good read by him, good instincts by him, and uh, you know, to be able to get that steal. You don't always know what they're going to go to. So when you get in the huddle and you start talking about it, it's a little bit of a crapshoot. Like you know they're going to ISO suing or they're going to ISO sense of all, at least you think, right? So they do a lot of ISOs, especially late in the game. You want to take up sense of all space. You want to keep suing off his left hand, but you don't know what's coming technically. They, they could run whatever they want to run, uh, but you kind of know where the ball is going to be. So you really just get in the huddle and you talk about two to three different scenarios you think might be coming. But more than anything, you always say, stick to our defensive rules. A lot of times guys in those situations at the end, they become watchers. And so that's always like a lot of plays right there happen. And then all of a sudden we had that stretch there for like, it seemed like two possessions where they got like three or four offensive rebounds. And they just, they, they look like they were the ones jumping and we were, you know, our feet were nailed to the ground in those two sequences. And, you know, just trying to tell them like, give multiple efforts. Like, don't foul the jump shooter. You know, since the ball came through a couple times on us and got those fouls, we just talked about trying to not chest him at that point when it gets that, that deep and go up. And then, you know, Zach's so big, but if Zach comes up, he, he struggles. He, can, he makes a one sudden move. He's normally not going to make the next play. So then you do that, and Carl then gets a dunk, and you feel like a fool. You'd rather someone shoot a pull up than dunk the basketball, obviously. So we just kind of talked through everything. And, um, I, I thought the play just at the end right there, our guys did a good job of kind of sniffing it out. They were trying to bring it back around. And we, they, those guys are right there, and they just kind of closed it down on them. Matt, number one or not, I think it's fair to say your team is still developing, still improving, so on and so forth. Yeah. What can they take from winning one like this, but also doing so, getting hot from three, and seeing what they're capable of when they get the shot? Yeah, well, that's the one thing that's kind of shocked me, is, is our inability to knock down perimeter shots. You know, today we made 13 threes. We haven't done that in a long time. And uh, I just feel like our shooting is much better um, than we have shown. And, but I think it's also a strength. We've always been able to get quality big men. Obviously, we do now. Um, and But with, with those guys, you got to put skill around them. they got to make a decision. <laughs> if they're not making any shots at all, they don't have to make a decision. The decision's easy. You know? And now, the one thing about being able to make threes, like you know, we get 39 points tonight on threes. That's what gets you. Those threes, you can make them in a run. You can make two or three in a row. It can be the difference in a game. Uh, but just trying to get those guys to understand about having quality possessions and not having empty possessions. Tonight, 14 turnovers is way too many. You know, that's that's more of our issue than anything is when we turn the ball over. Last one. And then, what can this game mean for Jenkins? Hope it gives them confidence. I mean, you know, you don't have a lot of guys on your team that, you know, make 343s. You know, he's, he's struggled from three, but like he's had, you know, great, ex you know, great experience in his career of making shots. But he's also been in games and played a lot in the past. He hasn't played a lot for us. So now you're in a different role and your minutes are cut. You know, it's hard to get in those rhythms. But hopefully this gives him some confidence and, and you know, obviously getting games and, you know, it really helps us and stretch the defense. Thank you guys. Thank you.